everyone, um, welcome to my bed. No. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Glow with Cynthia. I'm Cynthia Brando. And I'm very excited because this is my very first video for my lifestyle channel here on YouTube, Glow with Cynthia. And I'm really excited and also very, very nervous. <laughs> this is a whole new adventure for me. And so before I start off with what the first video is, which is a new year video, and it's about affirmations, I'm gonna do vision boarding, and I'm also gonna be making a cocktail today. So before I get into that, I thought because this is the first video that I should tell you a little bit of my story, my backstory, why I'm doing this channel and all that. But a little bit about me, I'm 43 years old, almost 44, and I moved here to Los Angeles, where I'm at right now, in late 2013. I was in my late 30s, and I moved to Los Angeles to pursue music. I'm a musician, I've always been, but I've had different jobs, and I was really scared to pursue music, which is something that I always wanted to do. I just got to the point where I was getting older and I wanted to pursue my dreams before I just didn't and just did something that I didn't want to do, you know, for the rest of my life. And I decided to move to Los Angeles. I moved here with very little money. I knew one person and I got rid of most of my stuff. Um, but before I moved to Los Angeles, I lived in Northern California for seven years. So I'd lived there a long time. And now I've been in LA for seven years and uh, I, I should, I'll probably do a post about that story, maybe a story time in the future. That's a whole story. But basically my whole life changed. I, I've always done music in the privacy of my home and a, a long time ago when I was 18, 19, 20, I played out a little bit. I played guitar and sing. And uh, I developed really bad stage fright and I stopped playing music. And so moving to Los Angeles, getting back into music, cut to, to the last few years where I've been supporting myself with some of my music ventures and just the community that I became involved in and all the stuff that I did with music and I'm still doing. So it's been really great. And so what happened was at the beginning of the pandemic, I was supposed to be going on tour and of course that did not happen and it was going to be my third tour as a singer songwriter and it was going to be on the east coast with where I'm originally from and so what during that time of kind of shock <laughs> this is how I dealt with it I wasn't one of those people that said okay I'm going to write that book that I've been wanting to write or write a bunch of songs or take a class or this and that eventually I got with the program and started to do things with my life with the changes of the pandemic and yeah, questioning existence and what I was doing with my life. That did eventually happen, but that was actually pretty recent, like the last month. And this is almost a year into the pandemic. So I wasn't one of those people. Basically, I just didn't know what I was doing. And I started watching a lot of YouTube lifestyle channels accidentally. And it all started with this woman. Her name's Kaylin Gutierrez. And I just stumbled across her channel because I was looking for a product review, which I do a lot, um, not usually on YouTube, I'll usually read reviews that people write about a product, product, and it was kind of a pricey product. And so I was looking for people that had, had, had reviewed it. And I stumbled upon Kaylin Gutierrez's channel, and she has a lifestyle channel. And she's, I think she's about 24 years old, very young, um, I mean, we, we live radically different lives and we're just in different points of our lives. And for whatever reason, after I watched her do that review about the product that I was interested in, I got addicted to watching her channel and I don't know why. And, and she does like a lot of crazy stuff. Um, it's, it's fashion, beauty, things like that. She tests out products, but then she also does like crazy stuff you know, I don't know, like one time she covered her face in something and walked around Target or I don't know, like just funny stuff. 
So I, I just, I started watching all her videos and I just realized I really liked her personality and it was kind of my entertainment. Liking the fact that this was a real person in real time, I just really liked it. And then I started to think that that was something that I would really like to do. Because besides doing music, I have other interests and on my social media, it's all about music and it, I, it feels very limiting to me because I don't really post a, a lot about other stuff that I'm into on my social medias for music. So I got this idea that I was gonna create a YouTube channel for my life outside of music. But then of course, all the fears came in. I was like, well, what's that channel gonna be? I mean, I, I didn't even know if there were any YouTuber lifestyle people, vloggers that were even in my age group because a lot of the, the a lot of the channels I saw were young people in their 20s, maybe early 30s. I wasn't seeing a lot of YouTubers that were in my age group, but with more research, I saw, okay, there's there are there are women that are doing this. So what would my channel be? I'm really interested in fashion. I've always been. If I had to start over, I would probably do something in fashion. I can't sew. I'm interested in health. Um, spiritual health, mental well-being, emotional well-being, that's actually a big platform that I have as a musician. And I'm interested in nature, so I do go hiking a lot and I actually gather medicinal herbs. And I'm really into cooking. And I thought, so I thought, how can I make a channel that combine the, com Ugh. how can I make a channel that combines all that? And so I came up with the concept of Glow with Cynthia. This is gonna be a channel that I'm gonna do all of what I just said. Yeah, I think that's all I'm gonna say now. So thanks for listening. I'm not gonna usually do an intro like that, but because this is the first time I'm doing this, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a backstory about me. So that's me in a nutshell. And let's get started on today's video. So the video I wanted to do today, I've thought about, and I've done things like this on New Year's Day before, where it's just a good starting point to start fresh, let out, let the old go, um, and start new with different goals you might wanna do for the new year, um, things to reflect on, things to look forward to, so that's, that's what I'm going through right now. And of course, this has been a huge time of transformation and change and tumultuous act, <laughs> tumultuous, <laughs> tumultuous, tumultuous action in the universe with the pandemic and what's been going on with everyone and all this other stuff. And anyway, so I thought, okay, to get clear on what I want this new year to be, especially with this new channel and new venture, I thought a good thing that I could do is do a vision board. So I'm also gonna talk about affirmations. So I wanted to briefly talk about affirmations, which is something totally new for me. I never thought about saying affirmations, but I thought that I would try it. And I, you know, especially for the new year, but I've actually been doing it for about a month now on and off. Kind of lost it a little bit this last few weeks and haven't been doing them. But basically an affirmation is just something that you say daily that's positive. And so what I, the first thing that I did was that I looked up affirmations on the internet. So all I did was type in affirmations and then you're gonna find a lot of information. So the first thing that pops up is 25 affirmations to improve your mindset powerful affirmations for every area of your life, et cetera, et cetera. Here's using affirmations for stress management. So I think the first thing to do is to set an intention. My intention for affirmations was I wanted to believe more in myself. I do have a problem with self-confidence. So I wanna get over this kind of stagnation that I've been feeling. So I wanted to have some affirmations for success and confidence. So the first thing I did was I, would, I looked at some affirmations and when you click on one of these, you, they're gonna give you affirmations. And there's so many, right? So you just have to pick the ones that mean something to you. So I just clicked on a random link about affirmations and the first one that it says, I am pain free and totally in sync with life. So that's not one that I use, but that's an awesome one. And what I did was I found four that meant something to me and I wrote them on a piece of paper like this. 
so I could carry it around with me and set it up and, and you don't have to like look in the mirror and <laughs> say these affirmations and give yourself a hug or whatever. So what I do is just as I'm brushing my teeth, I have my affirmations sitting there and I just say them a few times. And actually I was at the dentist office for a couple hours and I said my affirmations because I've had them memorized now. So mine are, I believe I can do anything. My ability to conquer my challenges is limitless. I will achieve greatness and I love and accept myself for who I am. So that's a little bit about affirmations. I'm gonna have a blog post associated with this so you can read a little more about it and let me know how it goes. All right, back to vision boarding. And I just wanted to say a little bit about me. I'm not one of those new age people that are super into vision boards and affirmations. It's, it's actually all kind of new to me. My background is, is kind of steeped in negativity. <laughs> I've been a negative person in the past. And so the last 10 years, I've been really working on that. So vision boarding is something that I've heard of for the last decade. And I never did one until maybe a year ago. And I don't even know if, where that is or if I finished it. But I know it's a good thing to do if you wanna manifest something in your life. And one of the good, one of the ways you can manifest something in your life, and I do believe this because I've, I've seen it happen with my music and other things that I wanted to do, is thinking about it, vis visualizing what you wanna do, being clear with your intentions. And so that's what I wanna do with this new year, with this new YouTube ad adventure, and just the direction where I wanna go in my life as I am reaching my mid 40s. So if you don't know about vision boarding, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna have an actual board, and I'll talk about that in a second. You're gonna find things that inspire you. And the first thing that I did to think about the, the vision board that I wanna create is I kind of meditated on a few words that would come up, what do I want in this new year? We are many minutes into this video and it's New Year's Day and we don't have a cocktail. What the? To do something fun for New Year's Day, I'm going to attempt to make a brand new cocktail. I don't know if this has ever been done. So I'm gonna try it out. So over the pandemic, one of the other activities I got into was whiskey. And I was never really a whiskey fan all that much. So I started to make a drink called an Old Fashioned. And it's whiskey and bitters, which I have here, and simple syrup, but you actually, I usually add a little bit of this, but it starts with a brown sugar cube, and it's got a cherry in it, lime, or sorry, lemon. What is this, a lemon? A lemon and an orange rind. So I thought, I love, because I love champagne and it's New Year's and I always celebrate New Year's Day with a mimosa. So I thought, what if I try to make a new drink that combines mimosa with an old fashioned and I'm gonna call it Old Fashioned Bubbly. So I've got Graham Beck champagne that I'm gonna open up. And I've got some bitters. Now, when I make the old fashioned, I ended up experimenting a lot with it. And I have traditional bitters, which is your typical mix of herbs right here. But I got some chocolate bitters and I started to use chocolate bitters in my old fashioned. And I really liked it. But I don't think that's going to mix well with champagne, the chocolate bitters. So this is what I've been using for the old fashioned Aztec chocolate bitters. So like I said, normally you're gonna start an old fashioned with a sugar cube that you're going to muddle in a glass that looks like this, or there's another glass that you can use for old fashions. All right, here we go. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start this old fashioned bubbly with some traditional aromatic cocktail bitters. Okay, so usually I just do a few, a few splashes. 
All right, then I'm gonna start with some simple syrup. So I don't like it too sweet. I'm just gonna add a little bit. And usually I add this after the after I make my old fashioned and I want it just a little bit sweeter. I'll add that. So I just added a little bit of that. And what I'm gonna add next is my champagne. So I'm gonna add some champagne. And so it's turned my champagne into a beautiful rosé color. And then to make it a mimosa, to put some mimosa in it, I'm gonna add some orange and I'm just gonna squeeze it right in there like this. So I'm gonna squeeze my orange in there and that's about almost a half an orange. So I think that's a good amount. Okay, I'm gonna add some more champagne. So I'm not gonna fill it up all the way. And then another thing that you do with an old fashioned is you add the rind of the orange. So you just take the peel like that and you kind of just squeeze it, squeeze the peel part and it releases the essential oils. And then you just plop it right in and you do that with a lemon slice too, like so. And I'm just going to squeeze the essential oils from the skin into my glass. And also, I forgot to do this, but you're supposed to line the glass with the essential oils. Plop it in. All right, the last thing you want to do is you're going to add a maraschino cherry. This is the real shit right here. This is Luxardo cherries right here. And it is not like your typical dyed cherries that you get at your dive bar. So I'm just gonna take one cherry, plop it in. And I'm also gonna take a little bit of that cherry juice. So a little bit like that. And I'm going to put it in. And I feel like I just need a little bit more champagne. And what I'm gonna do is I almost feel like it was safe to make it in a champagne glass, but this is good to stir. I couldn't stir this in a regular champagne glass. So I'm gonna stir it all up and actually transfer it to my champagne glass. Okay, so I stirred it up and I'm gonna transfer it over. And I didn't get it all, but I wanna get my cherry. So I'll put the cherry in there. All right, so now all we do is taste, but it looks pretty, huh? All right, I have no idea what this is gonna taste like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know, it tastes a little bit funny. <laughs> I don't know if it's the bitters, it might be the bitters. It just tastes a little bit strange. I wouldn't say it tastes bad. It tastes kind of strange. But I don't know. I want someone out there to make this and tell me what you think. Um, so if you like the old fashioned bubbly, let me know in the comments and take your cocktail, whatever you make, and let's get back to vision boarding. All right, so the first thing you wanna to do to create your vision board is what board are you going to be gluing all the stuff to, right? So a lot of people will just go to wherever and get um, poster board. You can get a big poster board and cut it up. A lot of people do that. Um, you can cut up cardboard from a box. Um, even a cereal box is a nice size. It just depends how thick you want it, where you might put it, if you're gonna hang it or tape it to your wall or something. So what I'm gonna do is for me, I have I live in an apartment and I, and I don't have a ton of space, so I don't wanna make a, a big vision board. But one of the ideas that I really like, you can start with a blank, a blank slate, it's fine. But I kinda like the idea of maybe having a backdrop. So a friend of mine gave me this calendar so I think I'm gonna go with the one that speaks to me that the most that has 
a saying on it that I really like and that reflects my vision, like what I talked about with my affirmations. This is gonna be my vision board background. So I'm basically gonna use this and I might even cover up the saying, I don't know, but I don't know how I'm gonna incorporate the background, but this is gonna be what I'm gonna start with. So based on my affirmations that what I told you about, I jotted down two, three, four things that are going to guide my vision boarding experience. So I wrote down, uh oh, can you see that? Okay, I wrote down conquer my challenges, success, love myself, and believe in myself. So once you know that, once you know what you're looking for, it's just gonna kinda come to you when you turn the pages. Something's gonna attract you. And then you're simply gonna cut that out and it just depends how you want to go about it. Some like to form their board, the whole thing, and then put the, put the pieces down and then glue them. I like to do it a little bit differently, so I'm going to show you how I do it. vision boarding looks like. <laughs> As you remember, my bed did not look like this when I started this project, so be prepared to, to get messy. All right, and with that, I'm gonna show you my vision board. So this took me about 40 minutes to make, which is about as long as I can handle doing this, I think. And I ended up picking out a lot of words. So one of the cool things you can do if you do vision boarding with someone, which is really fun, it makes actually makes it a lot more fun, and a cocktail. And what ended up happening was I started to come across these people that inspired me or that I really like. So I, here's Anthony Bourdain and Kate Spade who committed suicide. And I actually wrote a song with them in mind. And so I picked those, out, those people out because kind of going back to believing in myself and, and all that, when someone who's successful like that commits suicide and you know you think they're on top of the world, it, sh it, it, it reminds me that I need to keep going and be strong and all that. And Princess Diana, she, she really stepped out of her comfort zone and she did a lot of great things in her short life. And she's an inspirational person, so I put her there. Lady Gaga, I became a fan of Lady Gaga recently. I really like her music and she had that documentary on Netflix, which I really liked and I thought it was inspiring. I also have another musician, Nico Case, who didn't have a lot of success in, until her 40s, which of course is inspirational to me. Um, then I have Meryl Streep, an actress that a lot of people come up to me all the time and say that I look like her. And she, I've always liked her and her acting. I used to want to be an actress. So she was someone I looked up to. And then we have the writer James Baldwin and I love his work and he popped up. Of course, he's gone through a lot of struggles. So I put those here and then I put my Hollywood story because I live in Los Angeles and I am living my Hollywood sto story. 
Ugh. I am living my Hollywood story, which is not the one that maybe you see that you think about when you think of Los Angeles. And my story has been really unique here. And so I put that on there. I thought it was kind of funny. And then over here is kind of the success part. And I put a, a blue ribbon and it says first place. And I don't think that to be successful, you need to be number one or anything like that. But it's kind of funny because in music, I've gotten a lot of honorable mentions in contests, which is actually really amazing because there's so many people that participate in songwriting contests and to get an honorable mention is an amazing thing. And I've gotten about four of them for these major contests. But I, there's just part of me that thinks, and I've said this for this year, it's like, I wanna get first place. I would just love to get first place. And so not, but I don't, you know, I don't expect anything, but I just, it just kind of jumped out at me and I put that on there. And then I put the words that, well, they was, these were all on one page and I thought they really went together. I put listen, envision, act, engage, invest, and collaborate, which are all things that I need to work on. And then the last thing I put was, I, I liked these stacking stones because I'm actually a really good stone stacker. And so this kind of represented overcoming my challenges and my spiritual life. I practice Buddhism. And so this is always a symbol for me to, to listen, to learn, to contemplate, to think before I do things. And I kept the Thich Nhat Hanh quote on there. And this is my vision board. Oh, and I just want to say real quick, when I was going through the magazines, I came across something that I ripped out that I'm just gonna have on its own. And it w it's the five pillars of well-being. And I just came across this gem and I'm gonna put it somewhere. So the last thing I wanna say about vision boarding is don't take it too seriously. Have fun with it. It's not supposed to be a stressful thing. So just collect some, some periodicals throughout the year that you can always go to if you wanna do a vision boarding experience. And I hope you enjoyed my very first video. I just wanna say that there, there's been times where I wasn't gonna do this because I don't have the, the really cool gear to be a vlogger yet. I'm just on my iPhone, I don't have a, a microphone. Um, I don't have a lot of fancy equipment. And also I, I've, I went, went through the whole imposter syndrome, like who do I think I am that, you know, I'm gonna be doing this and what do I know and, but, you know, and it's not perfect, but I just want to say that it's a work in progress and I hope that you liked it and you got something out of it. And I also just want to say that if this, if you wanted more on vision boarding, there's going to be a blog post associated with every video I do. So I'll put the link in, in the description and you're just going to go to the website, click on glow with Cynthia, and there's going to be a blog post about this vision boarding experience. So definitely go there and subscribe to the blog and to this channel. And I just really wanna thank you for hanging out with me. And, and I, I really would like you to comment and show me a picture of, of your vision board if you decide to do it or your affirmations. All right, and that's it. So thank you so much. Stay strong, stay safe, be healthy, and I will see you next time.